Good morning, and thank you for uh, giving me the chance of presentation here. So I'm going to talk about some tips in chronic venous occlusion, and uh, I have no disclosure related to this subject. Just to remind you, I mean, the subject was uh, covered almost fully by the previous speakers. Whenever we are talking about chronic venous obstruction, it's not like what happens in the arterial system. We have a lot of scarring, synechia, and this is an example uh, how you will get inside the artery, the vein. And to let you know, this part can be easily peeled off when you do surgery, and that will help in some of the approaches which combines both endo and open uh, procedures. Generally, when we do a central venous occlusion, we have different approaches to choose from. We can go through an internal jugular vein, femoral, popliteal, greater saphenous vein, short saphenous vein, or even, especially in patients with dialysis, you can go through the arm veins. Which approach to use? Pretty much this is determined based on the patency of the veins, and ultrasound, in my opinion, is the best tool to determine that because you look at the thickness of the wall and the patency. If the femoropopletal segment, for example, is patent, you can go popliteal approach or saphenous approach, and sometimes even I go from the middle of the thigh or the upper third of the thigh to avoid going through occluded segment. If the femoropopletal vein is occluded, then we go through the short saphenous vein or we go distal veins, and sometimes then we go to the um, uh, internal jugular approach. Again, your best friend in those is the ultrasound, and you have to familiarize yourself with the ultrasound and how to use it. There are many ways of crossing a lesion, but in veins, unfortunately, this is for the artery. In veins, unfortunately, perhaps one or two ways of crossing the vein. Either you cross it or don't cross it. You cross it in a way you decide yourself that this works for you best. I saw different techniques. My technique, though, I use a combination of a hydrophilic catheter and an angled soft glide wire to start with. I prefer a long wire to start with so I don't do exchanges. Then I use a software to cross and negotiate the irregular and tortuous segment, especially the saphenofemoral junction and especially the common iliac vein because it comes at an angle. Once secured, I exchange it for a stiffer wire. And, some, and this is an example where you can buckle the, the wire to help you cross into, into the veins. Buckling the wire actually in the veins helps, is more helpful than even in the arterial segment. I use a technique of alternating buckling and straightening between the catheter and the wire until across the whole length. And then once I reach in the iliac vein, for example, especially on the left side, into the end of it, it tends to go to the contralateral side. So I use an angled catheter like a C1 catheter that will help me direct it into the inferior vena cava. So a combination of hydrophilic coated catheter and wires are usually used in my experience. Some people use different techniques. Successful in majority of cases, and some people use the sharp technique in post-thrombotic or chronic occlusion. Most of the time, those occlusions are much longer to be used for sharp technique. This can be used for tumors more and short segments in which you use a snare to guide you from another approach, whether the arm or the groin, and then direct yourself toward the snare. You can use the back of the uh, wire, or you can use even the different needles that we use for TIPS procedure. What about once you cross your balloon? I start with a smaller balloon to see if I open a channel, and usually it is a high-pressure balloon. It is much more painful to open and balloon a vein than the artery. You need a lot of sedation during this technique. Sometimes, actually, a patient cannot tolerate that. We change to a general anesthesia. That's why I do all of them in the hybrid room. We need prolonged dilatations. It's almost always there is a recoil in those patients, except in a small number, and this is mostly in um, uh, access cases, uh, dialysis cases. You might get by without recoil, but they will come back two, three, four months down the road, and then you can dilate them again if you don't avoid the stem. Dr. Razavi talked about the stents. In my experience for chronic venous occlusions, especially non-dialysis, they always need a stent. You can choose any stent you want. In my opinion, there are many stents coming, but the wall stent so far is the best stent in my hands at least. 
They can go through curves. They are soft. You can actually recover it before if it is partially deployed, you don't like it. These are all advantages. But the problem, you can never predict how long it will expand. So you have to be careful. You err on the longer rather than the shorter, because once you dilate, you are going to get in trouble. You cannot reposition it. Once you put it, if you are going from the femoral part, I usually start with the distal dilatation because it pulls itself distally. If you go from the jugular, I go again the distal, which means the external iliac because I can restent inside the first one. So it depends what approach you use. And that will help you go through the whole stenting. Stent size, oversize. If the vein is about a 12 millimeter, you go 14, 16. Because, especially in tumor cases. Tumor cases, if patient takes radiation or chemotherapy, the tumor might disappear. Now you get in trouble migration of the stem. So oversize, and that will help you in pro preventing occlusive disease or migration. What sizes? Again, you measure the vein before and after, but most of the time we use actually uh, in the common iliac vein 12 to 16 millimeters, external common femoral 10 to 12, IVC 16 to 20, and these are all wall stents. Sometimes I use the smart control actually, I mean the, uh, yeah, the smart uh, stent. Always go from a normal to a normal. Dr. Razavi uh, mentioned that. Never go from thrombotic area occlusive or leave an occluded segment without stinting and dilatation. You will come back with occlusion in no time. Extension, go to a normal like saphenofemoral junction. You can go to the profundum. You can go even to the femoral vein. You can go to the, inter uh, to the inferior vena cava. And if the common iliac vein is involved, most of the time you will end if you are stenting in the uh, IVC. And then you can use a kissing balloon or a crisscrossing technique uh, to finish the procedure. Again, more narrowing, a lot of collaterals around the stenting, it means more stenting or more dilatation. I go by actually the collaterals. Most of the time, like Dr. Razavi again mentioned, there's no best way of doing is that significant or not. I worked with Dr. Peter Negan for a long time. He never convinced me that this is really IVAS is working well because it depends how you adjust your IVAS to get a stenosis in that area. In Fiera Vena Cava, as I said, you can do kissing balloon techniques like the aorto iliac segment in the arteries or the crisscrossing in which you cross the whole IVC into the common iliac vein, then go from the other side, go through the struts, dilate it. I never did that. It is mentioned. I don't even dare to do it because actually the uh, wall stints can penetrate the wall and usually they rupture the balloons. Even you go through many balloons. when you. So taking those steps, also some uh, cases very quick here. This is a 35 male patient who came to us after seven years of DVT. He had an IBC filter inserted in North Carolina actually. He came with massive swelling of both legs and he had multiple ulcers, elastic stocking, and he was so unhappy about giving those ulcers frequently. We did an ultrasound which showed possible proximal occlusive disease. We did a CAT scan which showed this one. As you can see, uh, the CAT scan here showing complete occlusion of the IVC, patent iliac veins, and there is the filter sitting, which is one of the old filter, uh, uh, the old barred filters. And this is the occlusion in that area. I went from the right and the left side, and you see the occlusion, the collaterals, the IVC completely occluded, and you see that the filter in the position. So uh, an angiogram was done, as you can see, and then I proceeded with removing from the internal jugular vein the filter, although it's been seven years later, and the filter was removed. Barred, one of the characteristics can come out after many years. And here you see it's completely done. Then there is extravasation. So you injure, I injure the vein in general. But in the veins, don't worry about extravasation. It will stop, especially when there is occlusion. Once you balloon stent, everything will stop. You don't need even a covered stent for those veins. Then after that, I stented. I went from the internal jugular vein, by the way, the common iliac veins, both of them. And I had to do the flossing technique because it was so hard to penetrate those uh, um, uh, fibrosed areas. And finally, we put a stent in the IVC and the iliac veins, and then we dilated those, and we ended putting four stent uh, in this area. You can see here, and then next one. Uh, 
it's all open. Then we dilated that segment on the right side, and the patient did well. He's been followed for five years with no symptoms, no ulcers. Actually, his words, for the first time in seven years, I know I have ankles, because he never saw his ankles before. This is another patient who's 35 years old patient who comes with multiple accesses, the upper extremities, multiple bermacats. And again, he came with massive swelling of the left arm where he had one of the AV fistulas. As you can see, everything is occluded in the chest. Here, you have to work from the internal jugular, upper extremities, and the groins in order to cross. It's difficult to push the wires from either way. If it, you push the wire actually easily from the upper extremity, it's not chronic occlusion. It is a thrombosis most of the time. It is why some people will do a little bit thrombolysis if they cannot cross hoping to open a small channel here and there. So by snaring the wire from the upper extremity, again ballooning from both sides, and then ending and putting a stent in brachiocephalic veins bilaterally into extending into the subira vena cava, again using both approaches, the, the groin and the upper extremity. Quick, this is a case actually I did about 10 days ago, 67-year-old female patient with DVT, multiple ulcers in the leg, massive swelling both legs. She had in the past a thrombosis DVT and she had a filter inserted. One of them, you see two filters here, one of them did not deploy. This is a Greenfield filter and the other filter was suprarenal in order uh, to protect the patient. She came because of that, a venogram was done from both legs, everything is occluded in the IVC. I went from both the groins, the left and right, managed to cross actually with the assistant, both hydrophilic wire, hydrophilic uh, catheter, and it was a little bit difficult, but managed to go from the groins, both of them, and this is what we got after the crossing. Again, here, is, uh, the technique I use, you push the glide wire, buckling, moving, and it crossed to the other side, because this area is very scarred and hard to cross. Then you cross with the C1 catheter over the wire, and as you can see, you use both catheter to cross into the IVC. This is directed to the IVC now. Hopefully you can see that. And then you start your balloon. Once you cross, actually everything becomes straightforward. Dilated with a small um, uh, balloon, and again, both sides were dilated, and then we do that. Both are going to be stinted. As you can see, the first you start with the IVC, a large stint. Then within that stint, two more stints into the common iliac veins, as you can see. And you can do simultaneously deploying, but I usually deploy one at a time to avoid errors or blaming my partner in doing that. And then this is the deployment in the first one. And you see the stints here and then after that, ballooning both, and this is the final result in this patient. One side, then when we did the other side, I noticed there is actually a lot of collaterals here on this side, as you can see now, which means there is occlusion, and finally I stented that segment, and this is the final result. So using the same technique on all those patients usually works, but it needs some patients, it needs a long time. Sometimes they take one or two hours to do a procedure. Thank you very much.